Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the We Knives Special Edition Marata, or at least that's how I'm going to pronounce it. I'm sure it's not pronounced that way. This is a limited run, uh, according to Blade HQ, limited to 210 pieces. There are different versions, so if you're looking at this sort of melted American flag version and thinking, I don't know about that. They actually have quite a few different versions and they are widely varying in price. I will link this knife down below right now uh, or under this video so that you guys can check these out if you want to. It does absolutely help my channel when you use those links, but that is entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Wee Knives for sending this in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This is not a small knife. Um, and I think that's cool, right? Because we has been making a lot of like medium to smaller knives here lately. So it's nice to see them sort of evening things out. This is uh, coming in at about 8.75 inches overall. And the blade length is coming in at about 3.75 with also about a 3.75 inch cutting edge. I got to point this out. This really makes me think of like a Sinkovich style, um, like almost, almost like a Sinkovich Shir Shirogorov collab. Uh, the, the shape of it, especially the base version of this, which legitimately out of all the versions that they have, I think the base version, the plainest version actually looks the best. It, it looks the most like something that could have been a Sinkovich Shirogorov collab. Uh, and you know, on top of that, it's the blade to handle ratio and the length that they chose, which matches like the F95, the F3NS, the, uh, I can't remember the other one that I've got in my own collection, <laughs> but yeah, that size, right? Um, so it, it, it's neat in that way. Definitely. There are some really, really good things about this knife and there's some stuff that I don't like so much, um, but, uh, nothing terrible. So I'm going to share that with you guys here real quick. Uh, let's go ahead and move into size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see here, it's a pretty big boy, uh, quite a bit bigger than the Rat 1. Uh, how about up against the Demco AD 20.5? There we go. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3 and the Spyderco PM2? Alrighty, and then last but not least, up against the Benchmade Bugouts and the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. <laughs> rounding off a, a news report there. How's the action on this guy? Very good. Uh, I think We Knives is getting uh, better when it comes to like their factory uh, action. It, it, there were times in the past where it felt a little bit too tight or a little bit gritty, um, or just like it wasn't, like there was no effort to tune it. This actually feels very nice. And the detent strength is also very, very good, which I absolutely believe should be a little bit heavier uh, on a larger knife. The uh, flipper tab is not really pokey. It's got some pretty aggressive jimping right here. They really want you to light switch it, but man, it flips. <laughs> it feels good. The action is absolutely what you'd expect of a knife, you know, in this caliber. There's no double clutch or anything like that. Just takes a little bit of encouragement to get it down. All the way around, this really has nice flipping action. It's very, very satisfying. And, you know, there's no parlor tricks or anything going on here. Uh, this is, uh, you know, it was well tuned. They considered the overall weight and mass of the blade uh, and, you know, the flipper tab shape, all of that. Um, it's just, uh, it's good. Carry profile, thickness up against the Spider Copera 3. This knife is actually kind of shockingly thin. It's maybe just a hair thinner than the Spider Copera 3. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Uh, I think that a little bit of this knife's, you know, like it looks maybe like it's a little bit more bulky than it actually is. And it's because of the curvature of the handle accommodating for the blade shape. Um, but it's definitely longer than the Para 3. Maximum height wise, I mean, there there is some curvature there, but it's still a decent amount shorter than the hump on the PM2 or the Para 3. Really lengthwise, it's just a hair longer than the Spyderco PM2, which is amazing because you're getting a lot of cutting edge out of this guy. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm gonna get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. 
is if we, have, we get a T8 there. So we got a T8 for the pivot, uh, and we got a, a T8 for the lock bar insert screw, for the um, inlay screws on this guy. Now, depending on which version you get, these screws may or may not be here. The standard version is just a big, you know, like titanium frame lock, like a plain one. So you might have screws in different places. The main thing to keep in mind here is that we have T8 hardware and minimal hardware, regardless of the build that you go with. It should be very easy to take apart. So no issues there. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Uh, we are looking at some Nebula carbon fiber, which some people like and some people don't. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like Nebula carbon fiber. It really does look like somebody melted, you know, the American flag. Um, and it doesn't always come in red, white, and blue. This, mine has a scary demon face on it, right? It's just kind of like Gene Simmons, but like he's being blasted with a flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> like it's really it really does kind of look like something crazy is going on there um but um yeah some people like it uh it's not it's not really my thing it's not a cheap material definitely not i think uh i i think some companies kind of exploit you know the the fact that it isn't as cheap as regular carbon fiber and then they really like you know spread out that markup but it depends on what you want and the nice thing here is that you don't have to go with this version if you don't want to you can simply go with a less expensive version we're going to talk more about price here in a bit we have CPM 20 CV for the steel. I like to point this out. Yes, we knives are made in China, but they're not using Chinese CPM 20 CV. If you've ever thought that, stop because it does, that doesn't exist. It's not a real thing. <laughs> There's crucible CPM 20 CV, right? And then there's nothing else. So they're actually using CPM 20 CV from the United States. That's what the blade is made out of. Yes, the knife is manufactured in China, but the steel, the composition is made in the United States, right? Something to take note of if that's new information to you. Um, the way, and then the rest of it's titanium. We got some of that plasma anno. That's what I call it. Uh, I know it's not really the right thing, but the plasma anno is not titanium Damascus. Just has that kind of look. Backspacer and clip. Weight on the sky. Honestly, a reasonably impressive 4.48 ounces, which again, you know, consider the ratio there with the blade, 3.85 inches of blade, not bad. You're, you're getting a decent amount. I mean, it, it even weighs the same as a lot of other Shirogorov knives. Um, so it's really, it's really more Sinkovich-y than it is Shirogorov-y, but it's still doing its own thing. I'm just, I'm not trying to say it's a copy of anything. It's just very, you know, it, it's got some characteristics that make me think of that, right? So... Uh, I don't, I don't have a problem with the weight. It's definitely going to be bigger and heavier than for, you know, than what some people are used to, but not bad. Uh, let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness and get on into the meat and potatoes here. So blade stock thickness, the, um, the spine or the backspacer is a little bit curved or domed, which is why it's not wanting to lay flat. Uh, we are looking at a blade stock thickness of 125,000, says 124. It's probably 125, which is nice. Uh, it doesn't need to be super duper thick, right? So. Um, you'll, you'll definitely get some decent cutting performance out of the edge, which we'll talk about here in a second. Let's go into the move in the, uh, move into the meat and potatoes here. I do like the overall aesthetic of it. It does have a bit of an S shaped curvature, which is what makes me think of Sinkovich uh, and Sinkovich is not the only person to do the S shape. That's just, you know, where it, that's the foundation in my head, right? Uh, the, de the designer of this knife is Anton and I, I have tried so many times to pronounce his last name and I can't. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, and I'm really sorry about that, but I would urge you to go check out the listing for this, which again is going to be in the description, and go into uh, the specs to take a look at the designer's name, and then research his other work. I want to make sure you know you give credit where it's due. Um, I I've, I've just really don't know how to pronounce his last name, and I'm really sorry about that, um, but I'd rather... I'd rather not try because I feel like it, I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to butcher it more than I normally do, uh, you know, a uh, somebody with a more complicated name for me. Um, but, yeah, it is the S-shaped curvature kind of that makes me think of that. Um, but it's not aggressively S-shaped. It's still more classic knife-shaped. And let me tell you, the ergos on this knife are very good. This is um, this is a real joy to hold. The edges are all nicely chamfered, but they still take into account that it's a human hand holding this. So you've got a little bit of like this ridge right here is perfect. It's that lock in is right at the edge of this 
uh, finger here, my third finger, and it feels really nice. The pocket clip is very nicely knocked down and it is fully milled, so there are no hot spots whatsoever. You really are locked into this knife and it feels fantastic. The curvature of the blade, almost kind of a, um, almost a Persian style. Uh, it's not really, I mean, you can see here that the spine actually dips and then we have almost like a clip point out here, not really, um, but it almost looks like a Persian style blade. There's a flat here that is machine satin finish. And then we have a hand rub satin finish on both the swedge and the, um, the initial bevel, right? Down to the cutting edge. Cutting edge is beautiful, reasonably thin, not amazingly thin, but reasonably thin. This, uh, should you, should you choose to use it will be a fantastic EDC knife. And like I said, you are getting a lot of blade in that handle. I mean, honestly, this thing is reasonably compact in the same way that Shiro Groff knives are, right? You know, concerning the size. Let's just get out a couple here for you guys to take a look at. It's the Quantum that I was referring to. So I'm gonna get out the F3, the F95, and the Quantum for you guys to take a look at here. Um, and you'll kind of understand what I mean. It, it really is like right in the exact same ballpark. And I think this is cool, mainly because you guys know, uh, if you're not familiar with Shirogaroff knives, then uh, please uh, have a seat. I, I don't want you to fall over, right? People have really dramatic reactions to this, but um, $900, well, I don't know, what was this one? 1100 and then the quantum was also about 1100. I think of the uh of the knives out here if if the Shiograph thing didn't convince you when I was talking about it maybe it will now. You can see here um really what we're looking at. I, I think the one that makes me, you know, that it looks like the most out here is probably the um the quantum. So but uh yeah, really there's no other point here than just to say if you've ever wanted a Shirogorofi style knife, but then you look at the price tags of Shirogorofs and think, you know, f that. I'm not <laughs> I mean, I get it, right? Even as a collector of Shirogorof knives, I I get it. The price is kind of, you know, it's way up there. Um but yeah, it's it's it really does give me that feeling. Um which is cool. Uh on the blade, there's really Nothing. Uh, they really let you enjoy the aesthetic of this without having to look at a lot of billboarding. And then it says on this, like we see the serial number, one. Is it three? Is it's three hundred and ten? I said two hundred and ten, didn't I? Three hundred and ten. <laughs> this is indicated here by the actual serial number. So I was wrong about that. Sorry. And then it says CPM twenty CV. They really keep that light, so you're not having to, you know, look at any crazy billboarding. But yeah, overall looks good. It's really just. In this one, it's just the carbon fiber that I don't like as much. Depending on which version you get, you might get an anode, like a plasma anode clip or backspacer, which is also, these are also polished. That does, that is a little bit of extra work, right? Um, but uh, yeah, it looks really, really good. It just depends on the version that you get. I think the plain one is just like truly plain, maybe a little bit of anno on the screws, kind of like what you're seeing here. But uh, otherwise, you know, very, very plain. So the more complicated these special editions get, they get exponentially more expensive. There's a little bit of a lanyard hole back here. No spot for a uh, lefty uh, you know, clip position. So sorry, lefties, just nothing there. Right-handed knife only. The pocket clip, beautifully in and out of the pocket. Just absolutely beautiful. I really wish that uh, we, because I know they can do it, I wish they would start contouring their stuff. Uh, this would go, now, now knowing what I know about, you know, the, the types of machines that will contour titanium, especially, eh, it's a much more expensive machine and there's much more, um, it's, it's much more laborious for the machine, right? People always po point out, oh, well, it's still the machine doing the work. Okay. That machine costs money. Calibrating it costs money, right? <laughs> <laughs> all, all of the parts, right? But it's, it's not like you just buy it and it just works forever perfectly. No, um, that's a uh, that's a business expense, a constant one, right? And to keep it running accurately, correctly, right? Maintenance costs money, right? And, and then you also have to pay someone to operate it. So, yeah, that's factored in, right? Let's not uh, let's not pretend here. I mean, these are still manufactured in China. Labor is a lot less expensive, but. I would like to see, especially I think their special edition stuff, um, contoured. And I know, you know, if we's watching this, they're thinking like every time, like this guy, this guy reviews our knives and he says, hey, listen, you know, you got to stop doing the stamp clips and you got to start doing full backspacers. You got to give us a little bit more, you know, with these special edition knives, especially. So we do that. And then he complains about something else. 
Well, yeah, but it's because you raised the price so much. <laughs> I want you to do. I want you to do more and keep the price the same. It's what everybody wants, right? Do more and make it cost the same or less. Um, I would like to see more contoured titanium. Um, that really goes a long ways. Texturing goes a long ways. Um, the materials themselves, eh. Because this stuff, like, yeah, it's uh, it's nebula carbon fiber. It costs less than plain titanium, right? And plain titanium is something I'm going to complain about anyway. It's neat that it's laid in there. The inlay work looks really, really good. I like the plasma anno stuff. This kind of just seems like an explosion of color. It doesn't necessarily go together, but that's that's subjective, right? Some people might like it a little bit more. I do like the plainest version of this. I think that's the best looking one, but man, had we done some contouring, had we done a pattern, like a milled pattern on top of the contouring, now that would have been special. Um, this is okay the way that it is. I don't want to complain too much. I think this is, this is a very good design. It's an incredibly good design, right? But when it comes to the material choices and the pricing, that's again where I have the issue here. So anyways, in and out of the pocket is very, very good. I love how the, the, the crest of this clip is up here and how it all connects here with the peak of the back of the knife. That's really a part of the knife that I find visually very, very pleasing. I think a lot of people will too, right? It just It's more or less extravagant depending, depending on the version that you get. This is still a frame lock that's partially underneath in this version, underneath this um, sort of overlay or inlay here. We have a lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. Uh, we have a, a stop pin that is actually located internally. You can see the bar there attached to the blade um, and it locks out contacting either side of the titanium. It runs on little channels in there. Like I said, runs on bearings. Um, natural lockup is sitting at maybe 45 to 50%. Can we actually see it? Yeah, you can see the little mark there. Maybe 45% max. Maybe as little as 35% at the beginning there. Um, these never have blade play. Yeah, no blade play up, down, left, right. No lock stick, no double clutch, no pivot lash. Very, very smooth and consistent in here. Really nice detent. Just spectacular and perfectly centered. All right, so let's let's get to it. The pricing. This is a special edition Wii, right? Did they nail down the special editionness of this knife? Kind of. I've definitely been more impressed by their special edition knives. They kind of do the same thing. They're like, it's a Wii knife, but you get this weird carbon fiber and you get anno that's shiny and it has the, eh. Um, base price, $289. Definitely pricey. Definitely a little higher than I'd like it to be. But it's a really, really good design. And it does still feel a little more special than a regular Wii knife. The one you're looking at here, for some reason, $385. That doesn't make any sense. And neither does the Damascus Steel one, but I complain about that every single time. Um, as is usually the case, I would ignore the more expensive versions of these. And if you can pick one up, I would recommend picking up the base version because then you're, I mean, you it really does feel like a Shirogorov Sinkovich collab. And uh, it comes with a certificate of specialness and yay, and it has a number and all of that. So if you dig on that, then whatever. Um, but realistically, this feels more like, uh, you know, the base version would be, in, in my mind, more like a $250 knife. I think they would have nailed it there. But it is nice, and I really appreciate that we've got something larger. Um, I think um, for a lot of people, you know, who've always wanted to experience something around this general feeling and size and weight of, you know, some of the more popular Shiro Groff knives, but just don't want to pay that $900,000, $1,100, $1,200 price tag. Um, this might do it for you. $289 is not the worst thing I've ever seen from Wii, but it's definitely still higher price than I would like it to be. Uh, this is not, you know, the conclusion here is that this is definitely not the most impressive special edition we have ever seen, but it's far from the worst. I think some people will really, really like this knife, and I urge you to just pick up the version that you want, but the one I'm going to recommend is the cheapest one because it just makes the most sense to me. So these will be linked down below if you want to check them out. Not going to be recommending this to everybody, but there are definitely going to be some people who will very much love this knife.
Thanks again to We Knives for sending this in for me to take a look at. That's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all of my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.